The NES Castlevania games have a reputation for being pretty hard. While Castlevania 1 certainly has some tough aspects to it, it's a game that can be a lot easier than it seems when you know a bit about its mechanics and how to take advantage of them. So, I'm going to try and teach you how to reliably beat this legendary game. Let's start with some basics. The game has six levels, and each level is broken up into a few stages. If you die, you respawn at the beginning of the stage you were on. If you game over and continue, you start at the beginning of the whole level. The incredibly forgiving exception to that is if you die at the final stage with Dracula, you will continue right outside his door. There is a time limit, but it's hilariously long and almost in real seconds, unlike Punch-Out's Turbo Clock, so you'd pretty much have to forget you were even playing to die to it. Most importantly, the game has infinite continues, so the only way you're going to lose is if you give up. Keep that in mind when the level is kicking your ass. Your health bar has 16 parts to it, and every enemy does the same damage within the level with one exception. On the first two levels, you take two damage per hit. Levels 3 and 4, it's 3 per hit until you pass through this door. In the rest of the game, it's 4 per hit. If you need to heal, there is the occasional pot roast hidden throughout the game, and they heal 6 health. Let's talk about some weapons. You start with a whip that's short and does about 75% of the damage of the Morningstar upgrade. On a new life, you start with this and the game will very quickly upgrade you to the strongest, longest version of the whip. The whip covers about 3 blocks, but sometimes you're able to reach enemies that you shouldn't be able to. Oddly, you don't have to duck to hit anything in this game, except bats flying low. You're also able to carry sub-weapons. You press up and attack to use them, which makes using them on stairs very challenging. They consume 1 heart to use, or 5 for the stopwatch. If you come across a 2 or a 3, that allows you to have 2 or 3 of your weapons on screen instead of just 1. We'll use all the weapons at some point, but the real focus is the holy water. This weapon will be your bread and butter for a few reasons. First, it's a stunlock machine. Anytime the weapon is in contact with an enemy, it can't move. We will abuse this like crazy. Second, it flies through the air pretty slowly, which, when in doubt, allows you to be a little lazy about hitting frustrating enemies like the ravens, and worry less about timing your whips and jumps. Alright, on to how Simon Belmont moves and hits. First, Belmont walks and jumps at the same speed. Belmont pauses any time that his whip is out, so if you walk and whip, he will pause for the full length of time. However, if you whip while jumping, the pause is either negligible or non-existent, depending on how early you attacked in the air. This might not seem important, but it's very critical for gaining ground on enemies, especially those that like to keep their distance. Second, when Belmont gets hit, he jumps backwards in a direction relative to the side he got hit from. Normally, that means if you get hit from the right, he'll jump left, regardless of what direction you're facing. However, if you're jumping over something coming from the right, and you come down so it hits on your left side, you will be sent to the right. When you get hit from a standing position, you travel barely over two blocks distance, and of course, this translates directly into getting hit off a ledge and dying instantly. Some effective ways to counter this are, if you're worried, stand on some stairs. Belmont can't be hit off of these. If there are no stairs, try and keep away from the edges and otherwise play it safe with jumps and gaps. Also, don't get hit. Lastly, some of the enemies. There are three particular enemies I want to talk about here, and the rest we'll see on the way. Axemen, Skeletons, and Medusa Heads. All three of these enemies act as a barrier, not really as an attacking enemy. You do have to whip at the Axemen to break his axes, but in all three cases, if you don't move, 99% of the time you won't get hit, and being fancy to kill or avoid them actually works against you. Medusa heads spawn from the direction you're facing and at a height such that continuous walking will render them irrelevant. If you turn around or jump, you're making your life worse, causing them to spawn at a height where maybe they'll hit you in the face, or spawn behind you which is just as good. Axemen and skeletons like to keep a certain distance from you, so being aggressive pays. You can even walk some of them off screen to despawn them. Another effective trick is throwing a holy water and walking away, since they'll walk into the fire. That should be about all we need to know off the bat, and the rest we'll learn on the go. But there is one last piece of advice. You don't want to lose the holy water once you've upgraded it. Candles more or less contain the same items all the time, and I'll point out the ones with weapons in them so you can avoid them. Besides that, 
enemies will sometimes drop a weapon, so be careful about that. So what we're going to do here is go through the game level by level, and I'm going to try and put to use the mechanics we talked about and show you how to beat the game yourself. My way is not the only way, and I'm going to try and show you some options, most notably answering the question of what happens if I lose the holy water, king of cheese, at the worst possible locations. I won't be showing you alternate methods for the first two bosses because their ideal weapons are after the last spawn point, and they're both as simple as whip a lot to beat. One quick disclaimer is that most of these levels are not from the same playthrough because I was aiming to show some pretty specific things, and I'm not a masochist. Enough with the intro, let's do the game. Welcome to level 1 of Castlevania. As you walk through the courtyard, hit a few torches to upgrade your whip. This level's about as straightforward as Castlevania gets. You're mostly just going to be walking in a straight line towards the boss, killing a few enemies on the way. There are a few things I won't be showing you in this video, like where the Technicolor treasures are, like that money bag. As we head inside, you can kill every zombie, or if there's a big enough gap, you can jump over them. Ahead, up above you, are going to be three dogs. It's easier to deal with them if you stay below. You can wait till they jump, turn around and whip them as they come at you, or, if you're feeling fancy, you can keep walking and jump over them around the time that your head hits your heel. The timing is pretty forgiving. If you walk below like I just did, that third dog just runs off screen. That's it for this part, so, uh, don't fall on the stairs. Here, we'll find our first delicious wall meat hiding in the bottom of this center section. As we head downstairs, we'll see our first mermen. Although rarely a threat, they can always knock you backwards into the water, so be careful. Now we just head up the stairs back to the same room we came down from, and head to the door above. This door leads to the final area of the level, and is where you'll respawn if you die at any time after this point. Up until here, it didn't matter what weapon you had, but we're going to take an axe to this boss, and you'll find it right here. As we walk into the boss room, break a block on the far side for a two. This boss is very straightforward, and just a matter of throwing a lot of axes. His pattern is as simple as flying, pausing, taking a dive attack. There we go. Castlevania level one, in the bag. Right away, you can grab yourself a cross if you would like one. It's pretty handy if you want to be lazy, and lazy means safe. Watch out for the bat at the top of the stairs, and on the top left brick here, you'll find an upgrade. Taking out this knight with a cross is case in point for laziness. No risk of falling in a pit. You can walk on and off that floating platform, or jump from below. It's basically a gimme. As we go in the door, we'll meet our very first Medusa heads. You'll have to pause to let the first one by, but after that, just keep walking and ignore the rest. It wouldn't be a bad idea to grab a few hearts as you finish out this hallway. We're going to use a fancy but easy trick here, so let's stop and talk about it for a second. We're going to pause to let the first Medusa head go by, then jump to the next platform. Stay back, or duck to avoid the second Medusa head, and jump across again. As this third head comes by, jump straight up so that the head hits you up through the platform above. It's very easy and saves a bunch of time. Just head left and watch out for one last sneaky snake face, and head through the door. This is your last respawn point, and right below your feet is some wall meat. These crushers are one-hit kills and should be treated with care. Your holy water sits between the first two. The first and third crusher go all the way to the ground, but you can duck to avoid the second one if you're feeling nervous. A ghost will spawn behind you, so kill it and don't let it crowd you out. Jump to cause this bat to fly away, or I'll hit you later. Whoops! In the bottom brick of the stairs is a weapon upgrade. You can whip the fireballs that bone pillars shoot, but just stay on the bottom and level and swing away. Six hits for a kill. For this second one, you'll have to jump up or use holy water, but it's good practice to whip since you'll need it later. The ghost will sneak in behind you here, but just ignore it. Here's our final hallway to the boss. Medusa heads will come at you from the left, but just keep walking and you'll find your way to the big mama head. You have the holy water and we're really going to see what it can do, but if you somehow lost it already, you can just sit in a corner and whip and 9 times out of 10 you'll come out just fine. 
keep Medusa pinned, and it's as easy as that. Alright, that was our last level with Kid Gloves. Things get a little meaner from here on out. This level starts off nice and gives you a weapon upgrade right off the bat. A ghost will pop in behind you, kill it first. Up ahead are three flea men. You can wait till they jump at you and kill them like I will with the first two. Or walk underneath. Let them jump over top, stop, and whip. This skeleton is best to kill before he jumps up above, but if he gets away from you, being aggressive works well. As you come up to the top of the staircase, Jump to throw holy water onto the floating platform to catch out the raven. A skeleton will jump at you from down here, a whip will do for him. A ghost will also spawn behind you, so jump and whip to take him out and be careful of the ledge behind you. Alright, let's see it in action. Three crows are up here, jump to hit the first one. I like to stay on the stairs for the second and maybe third for safety. Holy water works very well. Throw some water on this guy, and head through the door. Here it pays to just keep walking. Ignore the Medusa heads as they come at you, and the skulls at the end is more trouble than he's worth. Sometimes he'll hit you once as you go by, but I think it's worth it. As we come up here, ravens will attack from above. Jump and whip them when they're about four to five blocks away, and you'll hit them before they leave their perch. Just be patient with the bone pillars, and if they flash, time your hits to hit their shots. For these ground-based ravens, I like to jump and whip while descending, because you can kind of cheat and have the whip cover a number of blocks on the way down. I do this because how high up these guys fly is random. If things get out of hand, stay in the center of the platform so you don't get knocked off. Try and move in and away from the ledge on this bone pillar, and let's head through the door for the last section. We have more overhead ravens here, and like before, four to five tiles away works well. Bone pillars should be pretty routine by now, and after this, it's just a few more ravens and pillars. Across this gap, a skeleton will be jumping at you, so whip as he crosses. When you cross that gap yourself, whip in midair to avoid a super cheap death. We know Medusa heads aren't a threat, and neither is a bone pillar, but I decided to get fancy and screw it up. There's a knife to avoid and a wall meat to get. For these two, I like to stand in the middle and throw to either side, but as we'll see on the no water version of this fight, you can trap them both in a corner quite well. Just keep the holy water flying, and you'll have no problem. So this will be a little trickier because you're stuck with a short whip for much of it, but everything I said before still applies. It's so hard not to be fancy, but see, playing it safe is just more reliable. Edge carefully in to start the boss fight and wait till they lump together in the corner. Then just hop over top, and whip as fast as you can. Easy enough, yeah? Alright, let's see some sewers. Alright, there's a lot going on in this first part, so we're going to see a lot of pausing. There's a stopwatch in this candle here. 
In this section, bats will come by periodically and likely be responsible for a lot of deaths. I like to keep moving to reduce the number I have to deal with, and if you're worried about hearts, you'll have plenty later. So these platforms don't give you a big window to jump to them. I duck right at the end of it because often a bat will fly across and hit you into the drink. If one comes by, whip low and you should be fine. Once we get low here, watch out for bats from both sides and mermen falling behind you. Don't feel a rush to jump onto this platform because bats and mermen can hit you mid-jump for an instant death. I had a good opening, but take your time until one comes. Duck to avoid the stalactites and watch for bats. Mermen can fall from the left, just ease your way onto the platform below. Head up to the next platform. Watch for one last bat. And the worst part of the level is over. This section is 100% eagles and flea men. Just keep walking and whip as they land. Don't let any jump around or you're asking for pain. But watch out for weapons as they drop because this is probably the worst place in the game to lose the holy water. As we come up to the doorway, don't stop walking and you can completely avoid the Skele Dragon. From this point on, it's 4 damage per hit, so be careful. You can pin the Skele Dragon happily with some holy water, and grab some wall meat if you need it. Head down the hallway, and we're going to stop about three blocks from the edge and toss some holy water for the next dragon. There's a big heart for you. Head into the boss room, jump up onto the second platform, and get throwing. Just like every other boss, it's a complete cakewalk. The flea man doesn't even have time to leave Frank's shoulders. So, let's see what happens if you don't do so well. Grab the knife and head in. Duck and swing away at the Skele Dragon, and don't forget about the wall meat if you get hit. Gather all the resources you can, because you're going to need them. Duck and whip for this guy too, and you should avoid most if not all the shots. Head into the boss room and keep your distance. His flea men will fly around shooting at you, and while you can stun it, you can't kill it, and hitting it doesn't do any damage to the boss. If you're out of whip range, use a knife, and otherwise whip for better damage. I prefer to keep in the center, as it offers better maneuvering, and Frank doesn't seem that willing to actually catch up to you. Stay patient and keep dodging. I consider this the hardest boss fight to do without holy water, so good for you if you manage to beat it. Right away, you're assaulted by a pair of flea men. Early whipping or a holy water works fine for both of them. This level is one of the few where I like to do location-based attacking. A jump whip from just inside this background block hits this skeleton perfectly. Take a step up the stairs and whip or water the flea man. Sometimes this skeleton will be on your right. If he is, it may be worth it to ignore him. If he's on your left, jump at him for the kill or lure him into a water. At the top of the steps, turn and jump attack right away to clear this first skeleton. As we climb the steps, you may have to pause to avoid a bone, but just get up in the skeleton's business. Leg! No, it's a 1-up, but it's the only one in the game, so I have to show you. This corner brick has a weapon upgrade. More importantly, that lump of red down there these are the dry bones of Castlevania. They start dead and don't stay down after you hit them, so watch the floors. Either hit the flea men as they jump at you, or walk under them if you miss, and whip behind for the kill.
We've got wall meat for a quick fix. Let's see our first Axeman. This first one is best to wait until he throws his first axe and just head up the stairs to despawn him. This upper guy's a little tricky. I like to wait for a gap and holy water him on the corner. He walks into it every time. Head up the stairs as fast as you can to beat the skeleton at the top. Red skeletons like to follow your position, but this won't be the last time you play stair games with one. Watch out for this second one. There's an upgrade up there if you need it. And let's show how you can pressure an axe man. Just keep walking and whip as you move forward to keep him in range. Now I'll show you what I prefer to do. As you come up to one, jump with both three tiles away and catch him in a holy water. Lay on the whip and he's done. beat this skeleton down the stairs if you're quick, but I tend to play it safe and wait about halfway up until he walks past. Alright, last spawn point. Take out the bone pillar as we're used to. Watch out for red here. Also, try not to be an impatient moron like me. This last section can get pretty dicey, so let's pause for a moment. A Medusa head will come from the right. We're going to walk left right away, and at the center-ish of this pillar, we're going to jump and throw holy water. If you jump from within the pillar space, you should be okay. Anyway, you're going to have to get a little gutsy and keep walking left for a hair to avoid the first Medusa head, then back to the right, turn around, and whip. It sounds complex, but it's pretty easy. Alright, let's do it live. Just keep walking left, and at this third pillar we're going to do a jump, water, and whip to take out this last Axeman. Death is going to spawn on the top right, so as soon as the boss arena is centered, start throwing to pin him and you've got it in the bag. Alright, now that we've seen things go well, let's see what happens when things go sideways on us. So step one is probably don't take easy hits like a moron. The rest is pretty straightforward, collect everything you can and we're gonna need a cross. Thankfully, the game gives us one right there. From this point on, we're gonna hit every enemy and candle we can because we want an upgrade and as many hearts as we can get. As we head up the stairs, you can jump right to avoid the Medusa head. After that, you're looking to keep the pressure on the Axeman and watch out for his axes. Keep pushing forward and take gaps in the Medusa heads to move in with a jump if you can. Hit everything, you really want that upgrade. This next Axeman is no different from the last, just make use of your crosses and keep the pressure on. Ah, there we go. Death is a pretty big handful. You can cheese him for some early hits in the corner, but after that, keep the crosses flying for effective passive hits and scythe clearance. Keep hitting the sides, and take your shots on death where you can. Ideally, the crosses should do most of the work. Don't let your guard down after he's dead, either. Look at that crap. Hits from the grave, man. Before we get going on this, I gotta tell you you're going to see this level twice. The first run will be keeping the holy water all the way till Dracula for an easy last boss. However, I consider it to be a gamble and you'll see why later. The second run, we're going to pick up a stopwatch early on and trade for an easier level and slightly harder last boss fight. So we're going to walk past a lot of giant bats on this bridge. 
water delays their attacks the longest if you can spare the hearts. Throw water as you jump over this last small gap to freeze the bat in case he comes up past the platform. When you land, you should basically aim to jump over the middle two tiles if you're not using holy water. Repeat the same strategy for the remaining upper, lower, and one more upper bat before finishing out the bridge. Take out the skeleton as you know how. Either rush him down or lure him in. Up these stairs, turn and jump the gap for a quick easy kill. And you're gonna do the same up top. Don't worry if you fall, you will always land on the platform below. So here comes the pain. These bastards are basically random and fly all over the place ruining your life. If you want to risk it, there's a wall meet down here but you're aiming to drop down and head to these steps. Don't take my holy water throws here for a successful strategy either. I'm basically rolling the dice and winning. This is the cost of taking the holy water to Dracula. Two eagles will come from the right, but where they drop their fleamen and where the fleamen jump is unpredictable. Your easiest gap is probably to drop down to the left right after these first two, but they may be in your way almost immediately. The unfortunate part is the longer you wait for a good gap, the more fleamen are going to be jumping around. And again, this is why taking the holy water is such a risk. Turn around halfway up the steps to cover your ass, like I should have, and do the same at the top of the stairs. Now, as long as you don't do anything hilarious, the worst is over and we can go visit Dracula. Let's see this one more time with gusto. This time, you'll be hitting the first candle in the bridge for a stopwatch and otherwise doing the same thing we did the first time. The level is pretty benign, and now that you've seen the fleamen ahead, you know why we traded our water in there. Just keep moving, jump to avoid where the bats come in from the bottom, and hope for a little bit of luck. Oh, come on! You can challenge the skeleton like I did, or you can drag him up to the ledge where you enter the room on for easy whipping. Take care of this pair the same way we did the first time. And now we're going to see the stopwatch shine. Just pause as soon as the first eagles appear on screen for both rooms, and get moving. Does it get any easier than this? Just watch out behind you though, you're not completely scot-free. This will be your worst case scenario. You got to Dracula with whatever, but he handed you your ass and now you're at his doorstep with a leather whip and empty pockets. Actually, the game gives you pretty much everything you need. You'll walk into this fight with at most 13 hearts, not all of which you'll need, and the holy water. So Dracula has two forms, and this first one will follow this pattern. Appear, open his cloak, shoot three fireballs, disappear, appear somewhere else, repeat. You only do one damage per hit to him, so this is going to take 16 hits, and of course he hits you for four per hit. You can only damage him by hitting him in the face, and the window for doing so is pretty small. No worries though, because his pattern is very easy. So let's pause for one cycle here to watch this. He's given us the most annoying scenario, which he does often, and that is to teleport directly to where you were standing. As long as you walk in the direction he is facing, you will be fine as long as you react quickly enough. If you walk towards his back, you will eat a hit, I promise you. The fireballs he throws are tracked based on your vertical position, so if you jump, they'll go up. If you don't, you'll always be able to jump over them when they get to you. We're going to walk away three or four blocks space, and just as he shoots, we're going to jump towards him and whip. It's as easy as that. So, at this point, I think we can conclusively say the magic three to four block jumping attack distance works great for just about every situation in the game, from skeletons to Dracula which means that once you get a feel for it, you are golden for the whole game. Most of this fight is getting used to the timing of jumping the fireballs and make sure you're walking the right way when he teleports onto you. The rest is all patience. It's all low stress though, because you have all the time in the world 
And since you're not using hearts, you're not going to run out of anything. Not only that, even if you run out of lives, you continue right at the doorstep to try again. Once we finish this first form off, we get the pleasure of this giant blue monstrosity. He's pretty nasty, but can be kept under control pretty effectively by throwing a holy water approximately every two whips. You have only about 13 hearts, and there can only be one water on screen at any given time, so the timing can take some work. But as you can see, the process is basically keep a few blocks away, move when he jumps, and keep the pressure on. His fireballs will usually get eaten by your whips or water, and while you can walk under him when he jumps, I wish you the best of luck doing it. If you have a good handle on the first form of Dracula, I prefer to kill him as close to a wall as possible so when I fight this form, I won't get hemmed into a corner. You can fairly easily whip two or three of Dracula's fireballs per attack for a chance at getting some hearts or a weapon upgrade. Just stand close enough that you hit at least the bottom two so your feet don't get clipped, and after a while you should get what you're after. Personally, I never do this, because I'm happy to fight the final form with a fistful of hearts and prefer not to sit around giving Dracula target practice, but the option's there. We've seen this fight at the hardest it'll get, so let's see the supreme cheese fest that happens if you make it here with double or triple holy water. As long as you get here with about 20 to 25 hearts, you don't even have to crack that whip. But, if you want to put in a token effort to make yourself feel like you didn't just cheese the whole game away, every second gem for a whip works well for the timing. I don't know who decided holy water should work like this, but thank you for making Castlevania 1 so much easier. It'll still take some practice to get the mechanics down, and of course familiarity with the levels does wonders, but hopefully everything I've showed you can put you on a path to beating this game yourself.